The lifeblood of any college football team lies within their ability to continuously bring in top talent. That's why recruiting is everything. And we'll take a look at some of the top incoming recruits for 2018. The potency to any option attack is tied directly to the backfield, and Cal Poly is bringing in a really good prospect in Dusty Frampton out of Linden, California. Frampton's style is very similar to that of current Mustang Joe Prothro, and if the 5'11", 215 pounder can be anything close to that then the mustangs will be just fine moving forward his pad level is impressive and has above average speed to take it the distance Freddie Robeson played some tailback in high school in addition to his receiver duties. In my opinion, his experience in the backfield will make him an even bigger threat as a receiver as far as rack yards are concerned. For a guy that tall to be able to get in and out of his cuts as smoothly is very impressive. He's going to be a terrific player for the Eagles. The Vandals land a really good quarterback prospect in Nikhil Mayer. He's 6'5", 229 and has a very smooth release that allows him to get maximum velocity on the football. He's got very good all-around game and that's going to get groomed and polished under head coach Paul Petrino and his staff. You can tell that defensive front seven was a priority, recruiting priority for the Idaho State Bengals as they brought in nine players that are either defensive linemen or linebackers. And Jacob Pinckney is a tremendous athlete that can grow into one of those hybrid edge players that are a nightmare to prepare for. He's a quick twitch athlete that also has a length to be a problem on both ends of defense. Rarely do you see an offensive lineman that's ready to hit the ground running as a freshman and be good because of the significant jump and consistency of the talent, speed, and strength at the collegiate level, but I can see a guy like Sean Anderson being the exception. The 6'7", 315-pound Anderson combines very good technique and footwork along with the core strength necessary to hold his own at either tackle spot. It's going to be fun to watch him develop over time. Montana State got themselves a pretty good quarterback prospect in Casey Bauman. He's a bigger QB with solid athleticism and has the ability to throw from different platforms accurately and the escape ability to keep plays alive. He's definitely going to be a prospect you will have to earmark as he has the skills to really transform a program. I think he'll be a star out there in Bozeman. North Dakota knows how to find defensive backs, and they have one in Marcus Vaughn Jones that definitely fits the mold. Defensive backs like Vaughn Jones that showcase top-notch technique and ball awareness will always find themselves on the field. I think he has the ability to be a corner or an overhang defender. 6'3 defensive backs just don't grow on trees, but if they do, the Fighting Hawks always seem to find them. Northern Arizona needed immediate help along the offensive line. They landed a Juco prospect in Mitchell K that can play either guard or tackle. That's how you add good swing depth up front. He was one of four Juco offensive linemen brought in with this recruiting class. So you can tell that the Lumberjacks are going for the quick help up front. Watching Hezekiah Kotlong's film, you come away impressed with how his eyes and hands are always in unison. I think he has room to get to about 315 pounds without losing quickness once he gets acclimated to a college strength and conditioning program. He consistently shows the ability to diagnose and disengage from an offensive lineman to get in on or flat out just make the play. Portland State is another program that does a fantastic job of recruiting and developing solid defensive backs. The Vikings add another talent in David Joseph II. I think he has that want to and instincts to be a very good, impactful player. He's able to fight through blocks, take timely, aggressive shots on the receiver, and shows great closing speed to the ball carrier. Jordan Stanley out of Brentwood, California shows very good ball get off and I think he will grow into a 290 pound or 300 pound defensive tackle. He played a lot of defensive end in high school but also has kicked down inside and he has the potential to be a really disruptive interior player because of his ball get off and core strength. His twin brother Jet who is also cut from the same cloth will join him at Sacramento State.
Southern Utah landed a really good player in Tanner McLaughlin. He's going to play tight end for the Thunderbirds, but you have to love the speed and athleticism that he brings to the table. And we've seen this a lot across the FCS. Guys are coming in built like wide receivers, maybe a, a bit slower to play wide receiver at the collegiate level, but they move inside the tight end and they provide matchup problems for opposing defenses. McLaughlin will definitely add some weight and strength, but his receiving skills will help him carve out a nice career at Southern Utah. Nick Eaton of UC Davis shows a variety of ways of getting to the quarterback. I like how his hands stay active and he shows outstanding change of direction for a linebacker. He was also a tight end in high school, showing very good hands. So you know that'll help him out in pass coverage, especially playing in this conference. So the Aggies, in my opinion, are building something special out there in Cali. And finally, Weaver State getting a Juco QB prospect in Jake Constantine. What I like about his game is that he can absolutely put the ball wherever he wants it to go. His accuracy at every level is exactly where you want it to be for a guy coming and competing for a job. And it's not just accuracy, but it's the placement that's great too. Receivers don't have to stop in their tracks to make a reception. They can just keep it moving down the field as he's able to hit these guys in stride. So that's a wrap from Football Game Plans FCS Kickoff. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media accounts and don't forget to check out and subscribe to the FCS Opening Drive podcast on iTunes and also on SoundCloud where Dave Hashagan and myself dive deeper into the world of the FCS. And don't forget to subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network on YouTube where you can find all of our FCS video content at youtube.com slash football game plan.